Hello Overclockers, my name is Brownie and in this video I'm going to be talking about AMD's brand new budget friendly graphics card, the Radeon RX 6600 XT. Overclockers GK has stock of many different models and in this video we're going to focus on four options from both Sapphire and Powercolor. Keep watching to learn more about the specifications, design and then finally I'll share the all important performance benchmarks. The RX 6600 XT is entering the GPU market as the entry-level option of AMD's current 6000 series stack, and it's being marketed as an epic 1080p gaming powerhouse. It comes with 32 compute units, a super high boost clock speed, 32 megabytes of infinity cache, and 8 gigabytes of GDDR6 memory. Thanks to the excellent efficiency of RDNA 2, the total board power for the card is rated at just 160 watts. So not only is there a jump in performance over the 5000 series, but also a lower power draw. Unlike the other 6000 series GPUs, there are no reference cards available from AMD. Instead, the 6600 XT launch is being handled by AMD's add-in board partners. This includes ASRock, Asus, Gigabyte, and MSI, which are all listed on the Overclockers website. Finally, there's Sapphire and Powercolor, who exclusively manufacture AMD Radeon cards. Available at launch is the Sapphire Pulse, Powercolor Fighter, Sapphire Nitro Plus, and Powercolor Red Devil. Each one varies in design, specification, and price, so let's take a closer look. The Sapphire Pulse retails for £375, and it's perfect for a stealthy build thanks to the black and red design with no RGB lighting. The Dual X cooler uses streamlined fan blades for greater airflow and lower noise, and the cooler is just 240mm long and 2.2 slots deep, ensuring that it's going to fit in most cases. You're going to need at least a 500 watt power supply with a single 8 pin power connector, and there's the option of powering up to 4 displays with the 1 HDMI and 3 display. Ports. Next up is the Power Color Fighter, which is ideal if you love a minimalistic design that gets the job done. It's all black with Radeon written in silver text, the dual fans and copper heat pipes ensure low temperatures, and it will intelligently turn off the fans below 60 degrees for silent operation. Just like the Sapphire Pulse, a 500 watt power supply with a single 8 pin connector is the minimum needed for installation. Moving on to the Sapphire Nitro Plus, which can be yours for £419. This card has my favourite cooler design, as it's black and silver with a touch of ARGB lighting on the Sapphire logo. This is perfect to match any aesthetic, and I think it looks rather classy. It uses superior components and has powerful hybrid dual fans for maximum performance. The 2.2 slot form factor and 240mm length means that it will be compatible with with smaller cases and it's actually surprisingly lightweight which puts less strain on your motherboard. The PSU requirement is a minimum of 500 watts and it has a single 8 pin power connector. Once again display connectivity comes in as one HDMI port and three display ports. Boom! This big boy is the high-end card in our lineup, and it's the power color Red Devil. It has a standout cooler design with a metal backplate and loads and loads of customizable RGB lighting across the entire card. The beefy dual fan cooler means it will take up 2.7 slots, and you're going to need the extra cooling as this card is built for overclocking. The PSU requirement jumps up to a minimum of 600 watts, with a single 8 pin and additional 6 pin power connection required. Extra juice is going to mean extra performance. As with the other cards, you can power up to 4 displays with the 1 HDMI and 3 DisplayPort outputs. The day one launch pricing means that these cards are great value for money in the current market. Plus, as you'll see after my benchmark results, the ideal choice for gaming at 1080p on a high refresh rate display. However, if previous launches are anything to go by, expect prices to potentially increase after launch. Now moving on to probably the most exciting part of this video, and that is the performance and benchmarking results. 
For my 6600 XT testing, I opted to use the Sapphire Nitro Plus. I chose it because it is a great looking card that uses high-end components and it has a well-designed but compact cooler. It also has the standard power draw requirements of a single 8-pin connector and 500 watt power supply. In my test system, I paired it with a Ryzen 5 3600 processor with 16 gigabytes of 3600 megahertz RAM. I also made sure to enable smart access memory. With the 5000 series now available, the 3600 might seem like a bit of an odd choice, but I feel that it's a great real world companion for the 6600 XT and it's a combination that gamers like yourself are more likely to have. Therefore, you might be able to more easily get an idea of how well this GPU would perform in your own system. However, do let me know if you think this was absolutely terrible logic and I probably should have paired it with a Ryzen 9 5950X to get those few extra FPS and max out this card. During my testing, I saw the Nitro Plus GPU clock frequency boost as high as 2670 megahertz, but on average, it would hover around 2500 megahertz. This is higher than AMD's expected gain frequency of 2359 megahertz and similar to the maximum boost frequency expected during bursty workloads. This is likely to vary from GPU to GPU, but it shows that the Nitro Plus is boosting high and it will provide greater performance thanks to a higher clock speed. Temperatures are also good. I installed this card in a Fantex P600S case with a room temperature of around 24 degrees and it idled at 34 degrees and managed to max out at 70 degrees under a heavy and sustained load. Overall, I think that Sapphire did a great job with the cooler and the design of the Nitro Plus. When it comes to the real world performance of this card, I tried out a total of seven different games. I selected what was most popular on Steam and a couple of demanding titles which are Red Dead Redemption 2, Dirt 5, Battlefield 5, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, CSGO, Rainbow Six Siege and Apex Legends. All of the games were set to max or ultra settings. The 6600 XT is marketed as a 1080p monster, but I also wanted to test the 1440p performance and I was pleasantly surprised by what I found. At 1080p, most of the games ran at well over 100 FPS, which is ideal for fast paced shooters. Even Red Dead Redemption 2, which is actually extremely demanding when it's maxed out, averaged at over 60 FPS. At 1440p, you can see that once again, the FPS titles ran at around 100 FPS. You could even increase this by reducing some of the less noticeable graphical settings. It's also possible to play more demanding titles at 1440p, but you can see that that minimum FPS does begin to dip into the unplayable territory. Finally, for those of you that love those benchmark results, here is the scores achieved by the 6600 XT in my system in 3D Mark. Pause now so you can take a closer look. Thank you for watching our launch video on the AMD Radeon 6600 XT. The GPU market has been far from straightforward this year, but it's nice to see that there might be some decent supply of this great mid-range card. It's cool, quiet and power efficient, and any of the four that we've mentioned in this video will be a great choice and provide similar performance to the Nitro Plus card we tested. The Pulse and the Fighter are the more affordable options, and the Red Devil is the ultimate overclockers card. I recommend pairing the 6600 XT with a 1080p 140p 44Hz plus monitor or even a 1440p high refresh rate monitor if you're happy to dial back a few of the settings in those newer games. Remember to check out the full range on the Overclockers website which will all be live and ready to order from the 11th of August. Like if you like this video, hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon so you don't miss our future videos and don't forget to leave us a comment letting me know if you'll be picking up an RX 6600 XT and I'll catch you in the next one. I'll take this and it's gone. <laughs>